You guys have been asking for more tutorials, so we've brought in talented hit film user Javert Valbar, who you may know as Inkscape Digital. He's going to show you how to do an awesome effect from the movie Doctor Strange. As well as this tutorial, Javert's got some additional content on his YouTube channel, and you can download some presets from his own website. But now to Javert! Hey guys, Javert Valbar here for InscapeDigital.com. Today I'll be showing you how to create two effects from the movie Doctor Strange, which came out in November. First we'll take a look at the final effect, and then we'll jump straight into HitFilm to get to the tutorial. Hope you guys enjoy! Let's create the green shield effect. I started by making a composite shot that was 1920 by 1920, a square. We'll have to resize it later to fit in the frame, but for now we want it big to be able to see all of the detail. I'll come over to New Layer, select Plane, and keep it white. We're going to make one circle mask that we'll use for all of the rings in the shield. So come up here and select the Circle tool, and position your mouse in the center of the screen. You can use the X and Y coordinates in the bottom right to determine where that is. Click and drag while holding both Shift and Alt to make a perfect circle that originates from the center. Then, instead of drawing another mask, I'll just go into the Controls panel and duplicate the one I made. I'll set the Blend Mode to Subtract, and bring down the expansion in order to make the line visible. Remember to feather both masks in order to avoid sharp looking lines. So now that we have this basic shape, I can just duplicate the layer and scale it down to create my other circles. Remember to create variation by changing the opacity and expansion for some of them, to create fainter or thinner lines. Next I found this Zodiac Signs picture on Wikimedia Commons. I brought it into Photoshop and erased the extra symbols, then inverted the color. I imported it into HitFilm, resized it, and used the Demult effect to ensure I'd have transparency. For the squares I use the same technique as the circles, but with the rectangle mask tool. The final shape was a plane with the radio waves effect added onto it. I changed the shape to hexagon and set the curvature to 40 and pinch to 4. You'll have to play with the wave start and end controls to fit your project, as they differ depending on how long the shot is. The final step was to add some movement by simply keyframing the rotation for both the squares and the zodiac sign. Now I'll create a grade layer and add the new energy distortion effect. I turn the distortion, scale, and diffusion strength up, and the diffusion bias down. And that's how I made the base effect for the shield. Let's get started creating the vortex by making a 10 second composite shot. I'll come over here to new layer and make a point, and name it top rig. This point will eventually become the emitter for the particles, so we want it to spin in a circle. To do that, let's first go over to the controls panel and adjust the anchor point's Y value to negative 400. Now I'll come over to rotation and hit the keyframe button. I'll skip to the end of the timeline and change the value to something like 15 times. This will make it spin throughout the shot, and because we changed the anchor point, it'll spin away from the center of the screen. You may have to raise or lower this rotation value depending on how long your composite shot is. If you were to attach a particle system now, you'd find that one emitter isn't enough to cover the whole circle continuously. You could set it to spin faster, but it'll end up cutting corners in order to make the keyframe. So instead, I'll duplicate the top rig point twice, and name one left rig and the other right. Then I'll go into the rotation settings and set the start and end points at negative 135 for the left, 135 for the right. So what we have here are three point rigs that will each hold a particle emitter. Let's create that now by dragging the particle simulator onto our timeline. The first thing I'll do is go into the emitter properties under shape and set the Attach to Layer to the top rig point. Then I'll change the trajectory to Cone, 
and set the Z rotation to 180. I'll set the radius to around 45. I change the amount of particles per second to 3000, and use the built-in rain streak texture under appearance. Be sure to checkmark the Align to Motion box to get the particles to look right. I then made the life 0.3 seconds, speed 500, scale around 20%, and added variation in the movement controls. Once you get this looking how you like, you can duplicate the emitter twice and just pair the points to the rigs you created earlier. Now you should have three rotating particle emitters. Let's add a glow effect to the vortex. I'll set the radius low and blend mode to add. Then I'll duplicate it, turn up the radius, and use the per channel intensity controls to give it the orange red color. Now, since the vortex will be on the ground, we have to make it so that it appears the particles are bouncing off the surface. Let's create a plane, make it 3D, and then in the transform properties, I'll set the X rotation to 90 degrees. Back in the particle simulator's controls, add a deflector and change the shape to layer. Then select the plane as the source layer and checkmark infinite plane. Drag your plane down in the viewer until it is in the correct spot. You can incorporate this vortex into your footage by setting the blending mode to add or screen. Both the vortex and shield effects will be available for download in the preset marketplace. Hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. This year we're going to be bringing back a much loved hit film tradition, the Happy Holidays Christmas video. We want you to send in your season's greetings videos for your fellow hit filmers. There are over a hundred thousand of you on our YouTube channel now and almost a million using the software. Be as creative as you want, no more than 10 seconds please. The deadline is the 15th of December. We are only accepting YouTube submissions, do send them to us via a YouTube message and remember you can have them unlisted if you don't want anyone to see them before the episode goes out. It's going to be an amazing episode, so much fun, really looking forward to seeing what you send in.